SpaceX's successful capture of Super Heavy during Flight 7 stands as one of the most remarkable moments in the rocket industry. However, is everything truly flawless? For example, have you ever noticed a potential issue with the Starship Gritfins? Specifically, there's something concerning about the B-14 Gritfins that warrants attention. Join us in today's episode as we explore this and many other important insights. While much of the attention following Starship's flight has focused on its explosion, it's important not to overlook smaller issues that can significantly impact the overall performance of the vehicle. One such concern lies within the grid fins of B-14, a critical component in the Super Heavy rocket's design. These grid fins function similarly to the flaps on an airplane, helping to control the vehicle's flight direction. However, for Super Heavy, the grid fins play an even more vital role during descent, enabling precise and safe landing maneuvers. This is crucial, considering the booster returns to Earth at speeds more than twice that of a bullet fired from an assault rifle. That being said, during the seventh flight, after a successful hot staging, it became apparent that the Gritfins of B-14 were slightly deformed when compared to their original state. This deformation occurred due to the intense heat generated during hot staging when the Starship upper stage ignited its Raptor engine to separate from the booster. The temperatures involved are so extreme that even Elon Musk acknowledged the challenge. To mitigate some of this heat, the vented inner stage includes a protective dome to shield the upper portion of the Super Heavy from the second stage's engine exhaust. Despite these mitigation measures, the grid fins made from steel are still vulnerable to the extreme temperatures and pressures they encounter. While the observed deformations were not severe enough to impact the flight, B-14 still executed a spectacular landing. The damage, however minor, illustrates a challenge SpaceX faces in its quest to make Starship fully reusable. For Starship to meet its ambitious goal of rapid reusability, it must not only land successfully, but each component must be capable of flying again without significant refurbishment. This is a challenge Musk believes SpaceX can overcome as early as next year, but each step toward that goal requires careful attention to even the smallest of damages. Now, in order to improve the grid fin on Starship, SpaceX could benefit from leveraging the innovations they have made with their Falcon 9 rocket. Throughout its history, Falcon 9's grid fins were made of aluminum, but SpaceX transitioned to titanium as the material of choice for these crucial components. The shift to titanium grid fins, crafted from a single piece through advanced casting and cutting processes, has offered several advantages in terms of durability and performance. Titanium grid fins provide superior maneuverability and enhanced durability against the intense heat experienced during re-entry compared to their aluminum counterparts. These improvements made the grid fins much more resistant to the high temperatures encountered during the booster's return, ensuring the fins can withstand the extreme conditions better than before. In addition to their enhanced durability, the titanium grid fins on Falcon 9 also improved reusability. These fins require minimal refurbishment between flights, which is a critical factor for achieving SpaceX's goal of making their rockets as reusable as possible. This is a key component of their overall strategy to reduce launch costs and improve the efficiency of space missions. The grid fins on Falcon 9 are also deployable, meaning they can be extended after launch and retracted when not needed. This is an important feature because it helps the rocket minimize drag and maintain better aerodynamic control during ascent and descent. One of the ways this technology could benefit Starship is by incorporating deployable grid fins on the Super Heavy Booster, which is part of the Starship system. Currently, Starship has opted not to include a deployable mechanism for its grid fins, primarily for the sake of weight reduction. However, this decision has its trade-offs, particularly when it comes to mitigating the high temperatures generated during hot staging. By deploying the grid fins only after the hot staging process has concluded, SpaceX could avoid subjecting the fins to those extreme conditions, which could prolong their lifespan and ensure that the grid fins maintain their structural integrity over multiple flights. 
While Starship's current design favors a higher, more straightforward configuration, adopting deployable grid fins could provide a significant improvement in terms of reusability and overall performance. That said, Booster 14 encountered more challenges during its seventh flight than just the issues with the grid fins. During the boost back burn, only 12 out of the 13 Raptor engines ignited successfully. Although this caused some concerns, SpaceX was able to reignite the missing engine just in time for the landing burn, allowing B-14 to complete its descent and landing safely. There has been speculation that the engine that failed to ignite was Engine 314, which was reused from the fifth flight of Starship. However, this speculation has been debunked because Engine 314 is located on the outer ring of the engine cluster and is only designed to be fired during takeoff not during boost back. Regardless of which engine was involved, this event highlighted a critical area for improvement. SpaceX will need to conduct thorough testing and make the necessary adjustments to ensure that future flights do not encounter similar issues. This will be particularly important as the company pushes forward with plans for Flight 8, as these minor issues could add up over time and affect the overall performance of the Starship system. Speaking of Flight 8, preparations are already underway at Starbase. In typical SpaceX fashion, the company doesn't wait for one flight to finish before diving into preparations for the next. On the 29th of December of last year, B-15 underwent cryogenic testing and the shift for Flight 8 designated S-34 has already completed cryotesting at Massey and has returned to Mega Bay 2 for the next phase of preparations. While these are positive signs of progress, the road ahead is not without its challenges. SpaceX is also working on the construction of the second launch tower, with the chopsticks for Pad B already transported from Sanchez and awaiting installation. However, despite Musk's confidence that Flight 8 will be ready next month, this timeline is ambitious, especially considering the need for FAA approval, testing, and the inevitable hurdles that come with such an advanced program. Achieving this schedule will require more than a miracle, and even with SpaceX's track record, it's likely that this timeline will be extended. Despite the setbacks and challenges with Starship, SpaceX continues to make remarkable progress with their other vehicles. Recently, their Falcon 9 rocket hit an extraordinary milestone. It successfully completed its 400th landing. The Falcon 9 mission, which was part of the Starlink 11-8 series, launched from Vandenberg Space Force Base on a Tuesday afternoon. The mission deployed 27 second-generation Starlink satellites, marking a new record for this class of satellites. Initially scheduled for launch on Sunday, the mission was delayed due to a plane entering the keep-out zone just 11 seconds before liftoff. The delay didn't affect the mission's success, and on the next attempt, Falcon 9 launched smoothly at 7.45 a.m. local time. The successful landing of Booster B-1082 marked the 117th landing on SpaceX's drone ship, Of Course I Still Love You, and the 400th overall booster landing for the company. This is a significant milestone as it underscores SpaceX's ability to reliably recover and reuse boosters, a key factor in reducing the cost of access to space. B-1082 had previously been used on missions like USSF-62, OneWeb-4, and several Starlink launches. It is one of four boosters that have exclusively launched from the West Coast, further solidifying SpaceX's dominance in the reusable rocket market. One of the reasons for the success of these Starlink missions is the ongoing evolution of SpaceX's satellite technology. The Starlink V2 mini-optimized satellites are lighter and more capable than previous models. SpaceX reported that these new satellites are 22% lighter than their predecessors, allowing more satellites to be launched per mission. The V2 mini satellites also feature a new backhaul antenna powered by SpaceX's custom-designed DAPIO chip, offering improved performance. The satellites are equipped with upgraded avionics, propulsion, and power systems, allowing Falcon 9 to carry up to 29 satellites per launch, six more than the original V2 mini design. This upgrade improves efficiency and helps SpaceX meet the growing demand for global internet connectivity. In addition to the Starlink mission, Falcon 9 has also recently carried out a historic launch, successfully sending two lunar landers into orbit. This mission carried Resilient, a Japanese lander, and Blue Ghost, a U.S. private company's lander, both of which are part of efforts to establish a permanent human presence on the moon. 
This mission represents a major advancement in humanity's space exploration goals and underscores the importance of Falcon 9 as a reliable and cost-effective vehicle for space missions. Despite its dominance in the space industry, SpaceX now faces increasing competition. Blue Origin, a rival space company, has been making significant strides with its New Glenn rocket. On January 16th of 2025, New Glenn successfully completed its first mission, launching with the power of seven BE-4 engines and reaching orbit on its maiden flight. This launch was a significant achievement for Blue Origin, marking its first successful delivery of the GS-2 upper stage and Blue Ring prototype payload into medium Earth orbit. However, during the descent, the GS-1 first stage was lost. But the mission was still considered a success as the payload reached its designated orbit. Despite the loss of the booster, Blue Origin is investigating the atmospheric reentry and has already planned for a second flight in the spring, contingent on the results of the FAA review. The rise of Blue Origin, along with the ongoing advancements in space technology, is increasing the competitive pressure on SpaceX. The race to develop more advanced and reliable space transportation systems is intensifying, and fans of both companies are eagerly awaiting the next big breakthrough. Whether it's SpaceX's Starship or Blue Origin's New Glenn, the future of space exploration is full of limitless possibilities. These pioneering companies are not just competing, they are fueling each other's progress, pushing the boundaries of innovation and achievement to new heights. The stakes have never been higher, and the next few years promise to deliver groundbreaking moments that will inspire generations to come. And with that, this has been Kevin with Great SpaceX. Thank you for joining us on this incredible journey, and until next time, keep looking up.